Well, recently we've travelled to Indonesia, carved up some wood opal. Then we made the long journey through to Ethiopia and tried to have a bit of fun with some Ethiopian opal. But we're coming home. We're going to Queensland and we are going to tackle a little piece of boulder opal. So you can see it here. Sometimes you get these interesting pieces where you can see along this side there's these tiny little ripples, that little glassy look that you can get as I put the light across it. There's tiny little ripples of the opal trapped within the ironstone matrix. And in this case, you can see that it's around here. It continues. Little circle, continues around, continues around. Continues all the way around. All the way through here and then back to where we started. So, in a case like this, you can sometimes get incredibly intricate patterns between each of these each of these walls. So the basic gist of what's going to happen in this video is similar to what you see with black opal or any opal really. We're treating that all as one color bar and we're going to come down and see what the face is like. So taking off this ironstone layer here and if it's no good there that's a pretty thick bar so clipping off this edge and ignoring that we'll come down and attack from the other side and see what it looks like facing that way there's quite a lot of material here I don't even know if my scales are actually going to handle a piece this big I think it should be alright let's go out a bit I haven't calibrated these scales for a while Almost 130. So almost 130 carats. And it doesn't look like much, but you never know with this stuff. Just because you can't have a side on look at a color bar, you really don't know how interfering this matrix is or whether it's going to create some out of this world kind of pattern. And that's why Boulder Opal is one of my favorites. Well, it is my favorite type. And I thought it would be a good palette cleanser after the Ethiopian opal where I just didn't have any idea what was going on with that and I still don't. But we'll play with it in the future and see, see if we can work it out. But let's stick to something I know pretty well and that is boulder opal. So here we go.
Well, I showed a lot of that carving process, but I cut out a bit where I was basically just... I don't know, I'd had a long day at work and this is such a relaxing hobby that I've decided I'd just mindlessly take off a lot of the dirt on the back. And there was a big jagged kind of chunk out the side here which I just carved a little bit into shape. This isn't the final shape but it's rubbed back quite a long way now. So let's have a look at it. It is a little bit unfortunate that it looks like a shark took a bite out of the side of it. I can assure you that I didn't get hungry during the last couple of hours. It was always there and I've kind of rounded it off a little bit but I haven't decided on a shape yet so at the moment that is that is what it is. Um, it's bald or open and it's been carved pretty rough so it's gonna fog up a lot and the camera isn't a huge fan of it but we'll keep it wet and should be should be okay. You can see that there's still a lot of color around the edge. The back is a little bit of a problem you can see this two-tone effect. So Justin's talked about this with black opal and boulder opal's similar. You can get unhealthy potch. It's this that's a lot more sandy than this. So this is really stone-like. You can feel it under your finger. When you hit it with a uh, diamond bit, you'll see that it kind of, it struggles to grind this away, but this, it'll just sink into it like butter. And unfortunately, if you look at this edge, it looks like it's going right down right down almost to the uh, to the front face. So unfortunately I'm not going to be able to take that back too much further without getting all the way through to the front. So we're not going to get a double sided piece on this one. This is about as good as the back's going to get. Of course I'll just even it out because it's a bit it's a bit jagged and undulating. So it's really just the focusing on the front. There's a few pores that I'm noticing. I can grind a little bit deeper because I want to go a little bit further down to get right on top of this kind of colour bar. The pattern so far is nothing exciting, which I'm a little disappointed with. I was really hoping that when you see these kind of thin veiled ripples all the way around the piece, sometimes you can just get wild patterns, wild patterns in here. But unfortunately this is not one of those times, or I'll go one millimeter deeper and it will be one of those times but we'll see. I'm just basically wondering what I'm going to do with this and I'll just keep going down further on this because there's not a lot there right now and there's a couple pools that you can see so I'll get rid of those and see what it looks like. One trick I do have for any opal really and especially boulder because you get these large pieces when you get a chunk like this and you kind of want to imagine the curvature that you'll get if you want to cut all the way back to this corner is get something like the knuckle in one of your fingers the one that fits the best press that up against that and then just curl over I mean I don't have really fat fingers but even then this little squishy part it can give you a pretty good idea of the shape if you were to cut right back into that little groove so that's a handy little thing that I use quite often because sometimes it's just hard to envisage what's going to happen and then it gives you an idea of what you're going to lose along the side here so yeah just a quick little quick little tip and I reckon that looks okay I might go for a large pendant pendant looking piece like this it would be a pretty low tier piece of jewelry if it were to get made up but I do need a bigger bigger piece to make a wire wrap with and I mean it's pretty good practice yeah it'd still be a bit too big for this setting but we'll uh, make another one make a simpler one and yeah I reckon that'll work out well so now it's just a matter of carving that back evening up the back just a little bit because we don't want it too uneven and there's a bit of a ledge here on this outer edge that I want to curl off but I don't want to lose too much here so I'm going to carve right up into that color bar and then we'll just start rounding it and get a nice nice little nice little piece out of it I think and we'll give it a final way and see if we need to give it a bit of a polish I don't know if it'll be worth giving a polish but we'll find out soon enough so back to carving
We've given it a general shape. I still don't like it. I still want to take this shoulder in a little bit. I still want to take this in a little bit, but the color's starting to come through there. But have I ever mentioned how much I like boulder opal? Because look at that. I did say it wasn't looking too exciting, but there could be something just a millimeter lower. And carve down another millimeter and you start getting some nice patterns. So that was exactly what I was hoping would happen. And I reckon going down a little bit further, I'll get even better even better patterns but I think for a part one this is where I'll leave it I will carve this back a little bit a little bit further off camera I think but then in part two we will go through and show that boulder opal can also be polished so we'll start going down into the lower grits well higher grits hit it with the nova tips and we'll see if we can get this a little bit shiny because right now this is it underwater. If I take it out and dry it, basically every one of these little patches will just turn to a bit of a cloudy white. It's still a little bit like that even underwater because the air bubbles get trapped on the surface. But yeah, and there's a little bit of pitting and whatever, but I'll, I'll get rid of those and then we'll get on to polishing. But yeah, I love this material so much. One major improvement that can be made and that I'm not doing at the moment because I don't know how to work the camera around it is to actually have running water as you're, as you're carving because you'll see that I've done for this piece alone I have done probably or oh, if I had to guess maybe seven water changes seven or eight water changes because it just turns into mud you just start carving in mud if you don't do any of that changing and you can't see what you're doing but if you actually have running water hitting it then it's so much easier to see. But yeah, because I have the camera like this directly above it, and I'd want the water coming straight down like this, it's kind of directly in line with this camera. So I'll, I'll, I'll work out a system for that. I might actually just have to have it coming in at an angle, but then I need a bit of pressure and then I'll need a bigger container. It's all, it's all very difficult when you start introducing a camera, but yeah, we'll work it out one day. When I'm not doing it on camera, I do use a drip, a drip feed of water, which is much easier. But yeah, that'll be, that'll be it for now. Stay tuned. Part two will be coming right up. Unless I get distracted and want to record something else, but hopefully part two will be the next video. So in that case, I will see you then.